Hey, my name is David de Feiter. I'm a senior architect at the engineering department of the IOTA Foundation. And today I want to introduce you to our brand new client libraries for the upcoming Coracellus release. Let's get started. So at IOTA, we really took the opportunity with Crossellis to reflect upon all the years of development we had so far and see what we could really improve there. One of those things is that we could have a better developer experience next to all the performance improvements already in Crossellis. To achieve this better development experience, we decided to build our client libraries from scratch using a couple of core principles we defined. One of these core principles is that the library should be very easy to use, even for users who have never used IOTA before. This also means that it has a couple of sensible defaults. This means that if there's a parameter that's 99% of the time always the same for your setup, you don't have to define it. It is opinionated in that way. Uh, another core principle is that advanced functionality should be available as well, but hidden by default. So the library is kept simple, but if you need the advanced functionality, it is documented and you can find it and you can use it. Another core principle is that the core library is built in Rust. And the other libraries like the Python or the JavaScript versions, they utilize that Rust library through bindings to have a similar developer experience with similar performance and all the same features as the Rust library. This is a big improvement over what we had before, where every library was maintained individually and all had their own separate features. Next to this, we also have a C library, which is built from scratch, uh, but inspired by the Rust library. This for performance on a low power device. So our core library is a stateless IOTA library, which can be used for anything from sending data to sending value, to receiving events when uh, something happens on one of your addresses, uh, to generate addresses, to get node information, etc. This library is, uh, like I mentioned in the core principles, written in Rust, but it has bindings available for Python and JavaScript and more languages soon. Uh, here's an example of a bit of code from our old client libraries. And as you can see, there's a lot of logic in here. Uh, first of all, there is uh, the need to define a node, then you need to convert to trites. You need to make sure that you know what minimum weight magnitude you should use. You need to know about the address format. A lot of IOTA specific things which you might not know about. Uh, a lot of boilerplate code. Not great. But if we look at what we did now with the new client libraries, you can do the same thing in just three lines of code. And in this three lines of code, we send a data transaction. Uh, we don't even provide a node URL. Uh, we basically only say that we use the testnet or the mainnet and we send off a indexation payload with some data included. We don't have to convert to trites. We don't use trites anymore. We don't have to input a specific node. We don't have to provide an address. These are the sensible defaults I just talked about. And as it shows here, it really uh, makes it a lot easier to work with these client libraries. Next to the core client library, we also created a wallet client library. This is basically a programmable wallet, uh, which can be used for anything that you would use to transfer funds or receive funds. Uh, this library is also used by the Firefly wallet, the command line wallet, by our faucet, by exchange partners. And you should probably use it as well if you're doing anything with sending and receiving uh, IOTA value because the abstractions here make it so that it's very easy to, to send and receive a value without having to do the advanced features yourself. Uh, edge cases like having to reattach the transaction are handled automatically. Uh, events are checked if there's new bands incoming on one of your addresses. And this library is stateful as well. So the synchronization process uh, is a lot faster. If you have to send value or receive value using IOTA, uh, definitely use this library uh, because it will save you a lot of time. Uh, here's a couple of examples of this library in use. Uh, so what you can see is that we create an account. The account is stored. We use Stronghold uh, for secure secret storage. 
and we can easily send and receive transactions here with a couple of lines of code. Very easy to use, very powerful. So to come to a conclusion, the IOTA client library and the wallet library are really big improvements over what we had before and should really uh, make it a very easy and satisfying developer experience to work with. We personally can't wait for you to try them out. And I hope you do. Good luck.